Hi, welcome. I'm Ariel Paurilis, a solution architect here at Dundas, and today I'd like to talk to you about Dundas Dashboard and the Microsoft BI Stack integration. Here is our agenda for this session. Uh, well, I'll focus mostly on the key reasons to use Dundas Dashboard as part of Microsoft BI Stack. I'll use some live demos uh, to showcase some of the integration points, and at the end of the webinar, we'll open up the floor for some questions, so please feel free to ask any questions using the GoToWebinar questions panel. So just before we dive into more details around the integration of Dundas Dashboard and Microsoft BI Stack, I'd like to give you a quick overview of Dundas and outline the history and long-standing relationship between Dundas and Microsoft. This will explain some of the reasons for the technology fit. So Dundas has been around in the data visualization space for over 20 years now, with different products but always with one focus, visualizing your key data. Some of you may know that the existing charts available within Microsoft SQL Server reporting services and other Microsoft technologies are actually Dundas old component technology. The IP of that very successful set of visualization components for ASP.NET application, SSRS, and SharePoint was actually sold to Microsoft back in 2007. Dundas Dashboard, our current data visualization framework, was born out of the experience we gained with our previous product lines in the developer component space. And while the old components line was a very flexible set of visualization, it did depend heavily on developers writing a lot of code which slowed down the deployment and maintenance process. With Dundas Dashboard, we still provide the same amount of flexibility while we streamline the development process and incorporate a lot of expected functionality that make the entire development faster, easier, and richer in options. So what is Dundas Dashboard? Dundas Dashboard is a web-based tool for the creation, deployment, and viewing of customized dashboard. For example, this is a call center dashboard created using Dundas Dashboard. To help you understand how it works, let's, let's look at how the data flows for the platform. First, there is your data. This could be source systems or data warehouses or any other technology you use to capture and store information. Next, there is the application. This is where the data is put for your business logic to become dashboards. Finally, there is the presentation layer, or how your users access their dashboards. For our platform, the data is your existing data. Whether it lives in a database technology, such as a SQL Server or SQL Server Analysis Services Cube, flat files like Excel, SharePoint List, or cloud-based providers such as SQL Azure or even non-Microsoft-based data sources, Dundas Dashboard will connect directly to your data to access the information your user needs. You can mix and match data from different data sources within the same dashboard project, on the same dashboard, even on the same graph. Our application, Dundas Dashboard, is installed in Microsoft Web Server. The web server could be within your network or hosted on the cloud. And for viewing dashboard, your users will simply open the browser and connect directly to the web server. We support the most popular browsers and operating systems, including mobile operating systems on Apple, Android, and Windows devices. So although the business impact of Dundas Dashboard will be large, our technical footprint in your organization will be very, very small. Dundas Dashboard focuses on information delivery. Data presentation is an extremely important part of the BI stack. It's where users see the most value and return on investment. And while mega vendors like Microsoft provide great tools for data integration, there is still lots of room to provide expertise and better software around the actual data presentation. Here are some of the main advantages of Dundas solutions. With over 30 chart types and 20 other data visualization controls, we are leading in a quality and variety of visualization. The platform is super flexible and extensible in order to obtain the right customized solution to match each organization's specific needs. Dundas Dashboard Mobile BI Solutions was ranked second out of 25 mobile solutions in this year's Wisdom of Crowd's Mobile BI Market Study. Using a responsive design dedicated for mobile devices, it allows you to deploy mobile solutions that will work across all platforms and devices. Our client support is second to none and constantly score high marks in customer surveys. And our consultants are highly specialized in data visualization best practices and providing better dashboard design, leading to higher user adoption, return on investment, and better performance management outcomes. The main differentiator I'd like to focus on today is the Microsoft BI integration. While it integrates with many different platforms, it is extremely easy to integrate with Microsoft BI stack, from the infrastructure to the data sources, all the way to the presentation layer. For that simple integration, we will see how the rest of the benefits completes Microsoft BI stack. So where does Dundas dashboard fit in the BI stack? 
let's take a look at a few typical BI scenarios your organization may be using. Starting from the infrastructure or your environment, you may be running your BI for a SharePoint portal, on a standalone Windows server, or even on the cloud using a Windows Azure. On top of that, you could apply your data integration using Power Pivot, a SQL Server data warehouse with or without analysis services data model, such as a NOLAP cube or a tabular model. Or again, if you work with a cloud-based solution, you could use SQL Azure. Now, once you've invested in your infrastructure and data integration layer, you will need a layer that provides the end user the ability to consume the information and make better and faster data-driven decisions. Here, you may be using Excel files deployed in SharePoint using Excel services, SQL Server reporting services, reports, or custom Excel files, including Excel add-ins such as PowerView for advanced data discovery. Here's where Dundas Dashboard comes into the picture. Dundas Dashboard will be part of your data consumption layer, providing you with data presentation and performance management capabilities. While Microsoft tools will serve the ad hoc reporting needs via familiar environments such as Excel or detailed static reports via SSRS, Dundas Dashboard will provide you with an enterprise-scale data visualization solution, allowing you to create custom interactive dashboards and reports that your business users will be able to access everywhere. So looking at the overall stack, after you invested time, money, and energy in creating your infrastructure, data integration processes, and analytics layer, Dundas Dashboard will help you make sure it is being used. It will provide value to your organizations and end users. Let's take a closer look at some of those integration points where Dundas Dashboard can leverage the investment in the existing environment and enhance it to provide the end users easier ways to consume your key business intelligence data. Starting with the infrastructure, Dundas Dashboard web application can be deployed on-premises, on one of your Windows server, or even on the cloud on an Azure instance. In many cases, we see our customers deploying the Dashboard application on an existing server next to some other web application. The application database is using SQL Server or SQL Azure, so there is no need to purchase additional database server licenses. Using your existing infrastructure, the technical deployment footprint in your organization will be rather small. Looking at data sources, the data is your existing data. Whether it lives in a database technology such as SQL Server, flat files like Excel, or SharePoint list, cloud-based providers such as SQL Azure or OData services, Dundas Dashboard will connect directly to your data and access the information your user needs. This is, there is a long list of data sources which is not Microsoft-based, such as Oracle, SAP, or even web sources, such as Salesforce or Google Analytics. Once connected, you can mix and match data from different sources within the same dash dashboard project, on the same dashboard, even on the same control. Let's take a look at a quick example that demonstrates the connection to SharePoint List. We actually built a sample for one of our customers, a financial services provider. Here's my SharePoint portal. As you can see, on the left-hand side, I have a SharePoint List demonstrating survey results. In this case, the survey is a result of the different investors providing information around this, their satisfaction of the security services and assets management services we provide to the different investors. On the right-hand side, you can see the dashboard integrated into my SharePoint portal using the Dynas Dashboard Viewer web part. So in the top, on the top of this dashboard, you can see the investor satisfaction results around the security services, asset management, broker satisfaction, and the overall satisfaction. If I scroll down, I can see additional performance metrics around the security services as well as the asset management that allows me to better interact with the information and provide additional insight to my end users. Let's go back to the top of this dashboard. Some of the metrics on this dashboard are actually sourced from that SharePoint list on the left-hand side. For example, the security services results right here and the asset management result are both a computed calculation from the SharePoint list data. This is actually connected live to the SharePoint list, providing me instant update on the dashboard whenever I added this list. For example, if I were to edit this list and change the security services satisfaction values for a few of the investors, And now I can just stop editing this list. Take a look at this number. It changed from 94% to 83.3%, as well as the gauge moved to update for that new result. So you can see the SharePoint list is connected directly to the dashboard, updating the result instantly whenever you update your SharePoint list. A 
A specific data source I'd like to highlight in regards to the NAS dashboard integration advantages is SQL Server Analysis Services, or for short, SSAS. Danas offers some specific functionalities that allows you to take full advantage of your data analytics models and put it in the hands of the user. Danas provides a connection to SSIS multidimensional OLAP cubes, tabular, and power pivot models. The connection can be easily configured to leverage your cube roles or user-based filtering to allow different security permissions for users, ensuring each user can only access the data he or she is allowed to see. When connecting to analytical data sources, Dundas allows you to easily create dashboards without writing any complex queries, as the queries will simply be generated for you. Developers can also create new metrics that rely on existing data sources without any data structure changes, and can even inject custom MDX statements. One of the unique options Dundas offers in regards to SSS integration is a smart date dimension handling using a feature named date mapping. We'll take a look at that specific feature in a minute. The end result of the connectivity to SSIS can be either an analytical and or a performance dashboard. Analytical dashboards allow users to perform ad hoc analysis and discover new trends. You can use a set of predefined reports or create new ones. You can also save those custom reports for future use and share with other users within your organization. Performance dashboards allows you to provide a specific user experience that match the way your business users need to access the data on an ongoing basis. This type of dashboard can be created without, with all the advanced data visualization controls and with more than one data source, including your OLAP cubes or tabular data. Let's go back and take a deeper look at an example that demonstrates the advantages of the date mapping, date mapping functionality I just mentioned. Here's a chart showing a cube measure over time using our date dimension as defined in the cube. While defining the dimension within our cube allows us to create a data hierarchy such as year, quarter, month, and day, it is also posing some challenges on the visual end. The root cause for the challenges is the fact that the cube stores the data mentioned member data as a string data type and not as a real date data type. As a result, when you visualize the information, it is being treated as categorical data and not as a real date data. Looking at this chart, you can see that we have four data points across four different months. Right now, there is an equal space between the data points that is misleading, as if you were to actually read the data points access label, you will notice that the gap between the months is not equal. But because the data is sent back as categorical data, the, the chart doesn't know what is the real scale it should use for the x-axis, and hence distribute it equally. You will also notice that the filter parameters one can expose for this chart is using a categorical hierarchy selector, which makes it harder to choose a date range as the user has to check the boxes for all the date values he wants to include within the date range selection. Let's take a look at the live sample. So here's this chart, and you can see the parameter selector provide me the option to select the different date values using different checkboxes. So if I were to, che to check the options and select the information between 2009 and 2012, I actually have to go and manually check all of those boxes one by one. Now let's see the information using the date mapping functionality. As you can see, the chart scale is now using a real date scale, allowing the user to easily identify the trend, suggesting the frequency of the event occurrence is increasing over time. You can also notice that the filter parameter is now exposed using a countdown control that provides an intuitive user interface to select the different date range values. I can click on the countdown control and go for the year, month, and different hierarchy levels to select the information. And I can also open this menu here and choose from any one of those small date tokens to apply small date filtration. For example, filter the information for just the year-to-date values or just for the current month. I can also go to an advanced expression and maybe choose one of those small tokens, current year, and offset it by a few years. Let's go three years backward and just filter this data on 2011. And once I hit OK, you can see this chart updated and filtered for that specific selection. I'm really excited about this feature. I find this to be an extremely valuable feature when it comes to visualizing your all-update dimension data. When it comes to data viewing, many Microsoft-based organizations use SharePoint as their centralized web portal, BI included. And while SharePoint includes performance point services, many of our customers choose to enhance their SharePoint portal with custom dashboards, getting away from performance point services limitations, complex development, and outdated user interface. Dundas dashboard can be installed site-wide using a SharePoint web part or can be embedded in your SharePoint page using the dashboard URL 
integrate with your SharePoint Active Directory authentication. Together with the access to SharePoint list and Excel documents hosted on the SharePoint site, Tandas offers a full dashboard solution for your SharePoint portal. While Microsoft designates SharePoint as the inclusive platform for data sharing, not all Microsoft BI-based organizations choose to use it. So while Dandas dashboard can be integrated and viewed within SharePoint portal, it is even easier to just use the native web viewer portal of Dandas dashboard without depending on the SharePoint installation. The third viewing option is to embed the dashboard viewer into another .NET web application. If you already have an existing web application and you would like to enhance your application data visualization capabilities, you can also leverage Dundas.NET Open API. This will allow you to integrate your existing application into another application or obtain a single sign-on experience and extend the dashboard behavior as needed by your own application. So let's take a look at the live demo to see some of these integration points and benefits in action. Here's another dashboard I've deployed into my SharePoint demo site. As you can see, this is using the Adventure Work Sample database provided by Microsoft. On this dashboard, we've actually designed information using four different tabs. The first one is the Home High Overview, High Level Overview tab, showing the information across key metrics, maybe for the high level executive of the, of the organization. On the left hand side of this dashboard, you can see a scorecard showing key metrics around the revenue, sales amount, and gross margin. On the right hand side, you can see the sales distribution across the different countries we operate in. At the bottom, you can see a list providing the supply and demand reports across the different products we, we sell. So for example, if I have over a specific product, I can see that product details and I can also click on the details column to drill down into a more detailed view, in this case a product view, providing me additional information about that specific product performance. Let's go back to the map. On the top right hand side of this dashboard, you can see a filter allowing me to control the continent I'm filtering and showing the data for. For example, in this case, if I choose the Europe selection, you can see that the map is focusing on that continent, as well as the data on the scorecard updates to show data specifically for the European continent. Now, I can see that the average sales amount is actually trending down and going below the target I've defined for that specific metric. I can easily click on this data point and drill down to a more detailed view, in this case the sales dashboard, and maintain that selection, in this case the Europe selection, and that date range I've clicked on to keep in context those same, the metrics filtered by that same selection. Now, as mentioned earlier, deploying within SharePoint is an optional way of deploying the dashboard. You can definitely access the dashboard directly from the web viewer provided with the Danos dashboard environment. Within this web viewer, you have the option, the option to, expose, to export to, to, to provide to the end user different options on the dashboard toolbar. For example, here I can print the information, I can also schedule different reports to export this dashboard into emails sent to a different group of users, providing an export as an attachment of this dashboard in different formats. Those different options in the toolbar, including the logo of the dashboard over here, can be customized and replaced to your own specific needs with your own specific selections. Now, going back to this dashboard, you can see the sales dashboard right now, and this dashboard actually has additional filter options, not only the date range and the continent are available here, but also the product and channel parameters are available for this dashboard. Here I can better slice or further analyze information using those different dimensions. Any dimension or measure that you have in your data can actually be exposed as a filter parameter on the dashboard. Now if I click on the sales territory parameter, you can see that this one is not exposing the information as, as the first dashboard did just at the continent level, but actually provides me the option to go down and filter the information at the country level as well. I can actually leverage the hierarchy that is currently configured in my cube and show that as my hierarchy in my dashboard or define a new hierarchy on top of relational data sources or even flat files when, con when connecting to those data sources in my Dennis dashboard environment. Let's go back and switch the value to all and compare the, the sales results across all different locations we operate in. Now on this dashboard, what you can see is the information across the uh, key metrics, the sales by territory, sales by product, sales trends, sales reasons, and the average deal size. Right now, it's all being visualized using common data visualization controls, like the bar charts, the pie, or the gauge. Now, you do have the option to expose to the end user many different types of visualization to provide easier ways to understand the information and act upon it. For example, in this dashboard, we have the option to visualize the information using a tree map control. 
The tree map control is using both the size and the color of the different rectangles to visualize the information and provide better insights for the user. For example, in this case, the size of the rectangle provides the information about the actual sales amount, and the color of it provides the actual information about the variance, the actual difference between the sales target and the actual sales amount. So you can see that the black highlights the worst variance and the gold color highlights the best variance. So in this case, I can see that while the Southwest is the best selling location in terms of the actual sales amount, the variance, the actual, the actual uh, uh, amount of sales, uh, meaning the, uh, the target that we defined for it, is not in a good condition. It's actually the worst selling territory in that regard. If I look at the Northeast, that is the smallest selling territory in terms of the actual sales amount, but probably one of the best ones in terms of the variance and meaning the actual target we've defined for that specific location. Going to the table view, here I can visualize the information to the user using a tableau display. So I have additional columns here, for example, the number of orders. Right now I'm showing the total values and the subtotal values for different locations, but I can definitely expand those groups and focus on the information at the different levels I need to see it. Let's go back to the chart view and take a look at some of these interactions which are exposed on this dashboard. On this specific dashboard, the dashboard developer or designer created an interaction that allows the end user to get additional context on the different sales, sales by territory data points whenever it's hovering over a data point. For example, if I were to hover over the North America bar chart, you can see here at the bottom a new chart displays the breakdown of the sales by the different sales channel. So now I can see that the online sales amount is about a third comparing to the resale sales amount for North America. If I were to hover over Europe, you can see that in that specific location, the online sales amount is almost the same as the resale sales amount. So that's a good way to expose additional information for the end user without having him navigate to a different dashboard or a different report and keeping everything under the same view. Another way the user can interact with the, inf with the information is just by clicking on it. For example, in this case, we have a drill down interaction allowed by just clicking on a specific bar and providing the user the option to drill down from the continent to the country level. And then if I click on the United States, I can drill down from the country level to the actual region level. So different options are exposed here, providing the end user the ability to drill down and up on the different hierarchy levels. Another option I can use to collaborate and share more information on this dashboard is simply by providing data annotations or user annotations on top of the different dashboard data points. For example, the user can click on the annotate option from the toolbar and select the range of data points he wants to annotate, or just right click a data point on the dashboard and choose to annotate right here. For example, in this case, there's already an annotation available on the Southwest, and if I were to hover over that annotation, I can see that here the data analyst provided a comment and mentioned that we should close the gap by providing new sales promotions. Other users can actually go into the dashboard, reply to that annotation, and have an entire discussion buying to that specific data point. Keep in mind that those annotations can also be provided to you directly via email using the notification option. So if you are interested in subscribing to one of those uh, visualizations on the dashboard and getting those annotations as users add those, you can just add, add yourself and be notified whenever those notifications, whenever those annotations are being added to the dashboard. Another option to use notifications is whenever you want to set data rule based notifications. For example, you want a dashboard to actually sample different data points on your dashboard and send you an email whenever one of those data points is not meeting a certain state or threshold which is defined for that data point. For example, here I can actually set myself notifications that will alert me about the Southwest not meeting or meeting the sales target results. Next to the notification option, you can see the export option. The export options allow the dashboard user to export the dashboard into different formats, including Excel, PDF, CSV, images, or even a PowerPoint presentation. Now, if you were to export to, to, export to Excel, you can actually choose to export the entire dashboard or just a specific control on this dashboard. For example, just the sales by territory. This will allow you to get both the data that was used to generate a chart as well as the image of that chart into your Excel spreadsheet and then further analyze the information. Now, these two dashboards I've demonstrated so far, the home and the sales dashboard, these are both performance dashboard. As mentioned earlier, these are dashboards which are designed to meet the ongoing, the ongoing needs of the dish different dashboard users, providing them key information about the different metrics they currently monitor. Now, let's go into the analytical dashboard, or the analysis tab. Now, this type of dashboard, this is a dashboard that provides the end user the option to view the information across different reports. The reports are basically different combinations of measures and dimensions that the dashboard developer selected for this dashboard. 
for example here I can see the product gross profit margin measure as well as the different dates and product categories as the dimensions available for this report. I can view the data in a grid display which I can also drill down on or I can view the information in a chart display which is again interactive and I can also expand and collapse the values in here. Let's go back to the grid view. Now this report is just a default report defined for this dashboard. The user can actually switch between the different reports the dashboard developer designed and created on this dashboard. For example here I've switched to the sales by territory report which is a combination of these four measures and the group dimension. On this dashboard I've actually exposed to the user the option to also use the actions that the cube developer provided within the SQL Server Analysis Services cube. So if you do have actions in your cube defined, you can actually leverage and call those actions directly from the Dennis dashboard interface. For example here, there is a drill through action that allows me to navigate into the more detailed view data of the, that specific report. This is actually going back and querying the original data warehouse underneath that specific cube. Another option for me is to maybe switch to another report, in this case the top 10 internet customers where I've designed a report that shows me the top customers and the sales orders for each one of those customers. In this case, I've actually integrated reporting services reports into my dashboard. For example, here I can click on a specific sale order and show that sales order information within my Dundas dashboard environment. So if you have a reporting services report that the users are already conf comfortable using, you don't want to redevelop and recreate that in your Dundas dashboard environment, you can actually integrate it and call and pass some parameters to it from your Dundas dashboard environment. So here I'm passing sales order number 70, 714, and if I were to click on this specific sale order, you can see that specific sale order passed into my reporting services report. Now, the real power of this dashboard is the ability to clear those reports and start dragging and dropping different combinations of measures and dimensions from your cubes and design and create your own specific reports or your own specific analysis. The user can simply expand the list of measures and start dragging and dropping different measures and dimensions and create his own specific report. So for example here I've dragged and dropped the customer account and I'll drag and drop the date dimension and now I can see the information across the different years. I can expand this hierarchy and drill down to the half years, to the quarters and view the information accordingly. Again I can view the information in the chart display or in the grid display or I can add more dimensions into my report. Let's drag and drop the product dimension and place it under the categorical section. Now I'm categorizing my data both by date and by product. I can also move the product dimension into the grouping section and now categorize the information by different dates and group it by different products creating a pivot table for my data. You can also open the menu for the different dimensions you drag, drag and drop and apply different filterations or different parameters selections to change the report values. For example here I can just select the accessories in the bikes sections or maybe under the bikes I just want to select those specific uh, categories and once I hit OK you can see the report update for that specific selection or I can drag and drop additional dimensions into the slicer section and apply filterations in here. So let's say I want to filter just by Europe and North America. I can hit OK and now you can see the numbers updates for that specific selection. Once I've defined my own specific report, if I want to reuse it and save it over time, I can just bookmark it and then access it when I'll access the dashboard next time. I can also share it with other users that will access that same specific report I've just designed. So let's go back and summarize. Here's how we recommend using Dundas Dashboard in conjunction with your existing Microsoft BI tools. Use Microsoft for Excel-based self-service data analysis and for detailed static reports. Use Dundas Dashboard to obtain an enterprise solutions for performance management, which is available everywhere, just customizable to your exact needs and interactive with simple integration into your existing environment. Here's a great visual to sum it up. If we look at an organization BI maturity, Microsoft tools will do a good job at meeting non-existent or preliminary data visualization needs, as well as some of the repeatable needs. Dundas Dashboard will allow you to take the repeatable, manage, and optimize BI solutions to the next level. At this point, we would like to open up the floor for some questions. I'll start by answering uh, some of the questions you've already asked during the webinar. Please type in any other questions you may have in the GoToWebinar questions sections below. If you would like to get a live demo or talk to us to better understand how Dana's dashboard can help you improve your Microsoft BI stack, please contact sales at Dallas.com or just request on our website at www.dallas.com.
Okay, so there's a question here about does Dana say uh, uh, example uh, work on IE8? Um, and the answer is yes. Dana's dashboard uh, is supported on a, uh, um, IE, uh, IE7 and above. It actually works on the IE6 as well, uh, but the, uh, um, the, the, the official support is starting from IE7, so definitely it will work on the IE8 as well. There's a question here about inclu including or excluding the Dana's dashboard logo. Um, so definitely Dana's dashboard gives you the option to fully white label the solution. So if you wanted to replace all the uh, logos of Dana's dashboard or everywhere where you mentioned Dana's dashboard, provide your own logo or if you develop for a, uh, your own customer then your customer's logo, you definitely have the option to completely brand the solution according to your needs. Um, as you've seen um, uh, during the, the live webinars, there's a couple of samples I've demonstrated. They have very different styles. You have full control in, in terms of the styling and the full uh, look and feel of the dashboard. So definitely uh, uh, that includes the uh, uh, logos of Dana's dashboard as well. So there's a question here, can we switch visualization types in, sh in the SharePoint viewer web part as well as the Dundas uh, web interface? Um, so the Dundas uh, web interface is exactly the same as the one that you see in your SharePoint environment. Um, they act the same way. Uh, the web part actually points to the same viewer that we use to uh, view the dashboard. Um, so every functionality that you can develop outside of SharePoint, you can view in SharePoint as well, including the ability to switch uh, the visualization types or any other type of interaction which are available. So there's a question here around what is the learning curve uh, to produce something like this, uh, assuming that you are a, um, uh, an SSAS developer and deliver dashboards with Excel uh, uh, and using uh, Excel pivot tables. So if you are an SSAS developer, I would say this would be very simple and easy to pick up, uh, especially on top of cubes, as mentioned earlier. There is no need to develop any, uh, any custom MDX queries. This will all actually all be generated automatically for you. So you have a, uh, uh, very easy, um, a very easy, simple a, uh, a flow to create those dashboards. Creating an analytical dashboard is a matter of a few minutes. Um, there's actually some training videos on the website that will show you that flow as well. Uh, but it's a question of just establishing the connection and then creating that analytical a, uh, dashboard. Creating a performance dashboard may take a bit longer depending on the actual requirements and, and what you want to produce on that dashboard, what kind of visualization you want to use. But again, it's just a question of uh, selecting the measures and dimensions which you've defined your cube and then just dragging and dropping that on your dashboard using the different types of visualization and using the properties we provide to customize the look and feel for those visualizations. So there's a question here about the ability to connect to open source platforms like uh, Google Spreadsheets. Um, so definitely uh, uh, Dando's dashboard uh, provides you, as mentioned, a very long list of the uh, data sources you can consume data from. Um, if, if one of the uh, data sources you want to connect to is not uh, uh, available under that list of the data sources we connect to out of the box, we also offer uh, a data provider API that allows you to connect and create new data sources uh, connections. So specifically for Google Spreadsheet, we actually have a sample on our website that demonstrates how we can connect to Google Spreadsheets uh, using the API. Um, so that's actually a connector that we already have developed and you can use as well uh, as term in terms of a data source for your dashboard. Okay, so here is a question around, um, I guess, a limitation that other visualization tools provide around the, uh, um, um, the ability to group uh, items that are not defined in cubes um, using hierarchies. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you do have the option to define hierarchies in Dana's dashboard and use that to uh, group the information even if the data is not coming from a cube. So the question is, uh, is it possible to do that with Dana's? For example, the top 10 cities and then... Uh, 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 all the others uh, in a group. So yeah, definitely uh, you have the option in the dashboard 
um, to create those kind of a uh, uh, of groups um, to a um, to get the top ten across the different groups at the different le levels that they you've defined. Um, that's uh, definitely an option which is available to you in Nano's dashboard as well. So there's a question here, can we integrate uh, SQL Server reporting services or SSRS with uh, Dandas? Um, so I demonstrated uh, uh, in my last sample the option to, uh, um, to integrate the reporting services reports in the uh, Dandas dashboard environment. Um, definitely that option uh, um, um, is available. You can pass parameters from the uh, uh, Dandas dashboard interface into the uh, reporting services report over the, uh, the URL as a, as a query string parameter. Um, or you can just uh, navigate to a different web page that contains that reporting services report. Um, so that kind of integration is, uh, is possible as well. Um, so there's a question here. Are the controls shown in the uh, Dandas dashboard viewer, like uh, the uh, uh, toolbar controls or around the annotation, notification, and so on, are those available within SharePoint? And the answer is yes. Um, those uh, those uh, options within the toolbar are, uh, as mentioned, options that you can choose to uh, uh, expose based on the uh, specific user that logged into the dashboard environment. Um, the actual the actual option to show and hide the toolbar is a configuration that you can provide to the uh, uh, web part that they, uh, uh, you configure in SharePoint to uh, visualize your dashboard. Um, so that option is a uh, is available as well within SharePoint, as mentioned earlier. Uh, everything you can do in the web viewer, you can also do in, in your SharePoint environment. Okay, uh, let's take just a, a few, uh, two other questions and then uh, We'll close this uh, webinar, so let's see. Okay, so there's a question here around the uh, uh, versions of SharePoint that they are compatible with uh, Dandas Dashboard. Um, so Dandas Dashboard they, uh, supports all the common versions of SharePoint, including uh, SharePoint 2013, um, all the way back, I think, to SharePoint uh, 2007. Um, so definitely uh, uh, all a uh, common SharePoint environment are supported. And I think the last question they uh, uh, will take is around the uh, um, uh, the mobile support. So the uh, the question is: Does Dundas Dashboard employ uh, an application or use the browser for uh, mobile devices? Um, so what we recommend using is uh, using our HTML5 um, uh, viewer for mobile application. The HTML5 viewer uh, includes specific uh, functionalities, as mentioned earlier, that are uh, designed uh, for mobile devices, including a, uh, a home tile-based navigation, which is using a responsive design. The advantage of using the HTML5 viewer is that it actually allows you to access and navigate to your dashboards um, on all mobile devices, including uh, iOS devices, Android, BlackBerry, and Windows devices, without having to develop a different solution for each one of those devices. So definitely uh, uh, there's an advantage there on the uh, uh, development and deployment. Uh, and as mentioned, it is using a responsive design that will match specifically the different screen size that you have on your mobile devices. Okay, so uh, at this point, um, if we didn't uh, have a chance to answer your question right now, uh, we will definitely uh, uh, email the, uh, the answer to you after this uh, session. Um, this webinar will also be available on our website in a few days. Thank you for uh, attending this webinar and we look forward to uh, talking to you soon.